Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of the Fredericksburg Standard Radio Post News Broadcast. This is the first one we've done in like, oh gosh, like three months. But we're back now because we can be and we have some free time. Uh, and first off, I wanted to say uh, we are losing one of our uh, better reporters, Brooke Nevins. Um, she's been here since November and uh, when we hired her, we kind of expected that she'd go to bigger and better places, uh, and she's going to go to the Colorado Springs Gazette. So do you want to talk a little bit about your departure? Yeah, so I wouldn't say better places, maybe bigger places, but um, I'll always love Fredericksburg. I'm from here, and so it was um, a privilege and an honor to get to work here um, and with all these amazing people. Um, it's just really truly been a joy. I am excited, though, to move up to Colorado Springs, where I will be um, a reporter for the Colorado Springs Gazette. So if you have any interest in the news up there, um, go check out the website and you'll see my byline there a couple times. But I'm just very excited. Um, but I am I'm sad to be leaving here, but I'm very, very blessed by um, all of the lessons I've learned and the people I've, I've met through the newspaper and just in the community as well. Couldn't have done it without all these amazing people. So She's written some awesome stories for us, uh, the Dooley's closing story she's written sto uh, several stories of just about big big impacts here in town she wrote a recent story a couple of weeks ago about Dooley's giving the shelves to uh, Casa Uber Alice was that the mm -hmm. program yes. and so that was really cool uh, so check out all of her work on freddishburgstandard.com or in previous issues we joked before we got on that we were going to ask you what gives you the right to leave us, <laughs> but uh, we're not actually going to do that because, <laughs> um, but yeah, you've done a great, a great job for us. Thank you. Um, we're going to get right into the, well, actually, before I do that, I want to welcome on our new intern, uh, Lauren Guzzi. She's uh, uh, from here. She grew up in Fredericksburg, Texas, and she's going to the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, she's here for the summer through the Dow Jones News internship. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Um, well, hi, I'm Lauren, like Sam said. Um, I graduated at FHS uh, 2021, so not too recently. And I go up to the University of Wisconsin and I'm currently studying journalism there. So I'm very excited to be here. Everyone here is very lovely. So good newspaper to start at, I think. Yeah. And she also is looking into doing some broadcast stuff. So uh, and, and kind of focusing on that so we're going to get her doing some feature videos yeah this is right up my alley so yeah. and she might be doing some q and a's this uh this summer as well so look out for that uh okay so now we'll jump into the news um turner hall that was a big a big deal they uh we saw um an email that was sent to us that the property uh has gone up for sale and uh, brent did a story about that for the front page this week do you want to tell us a little bit about what you found out sure yeah i would love to um i think there's been a lot of misinformation out um, regarding you know the rumor that oh they're selling the property and um, I got a chance to speak to a couple of different representatives of the society that owns the property um, which is the social turns therein am I saying that right social turn varine yes thank you <laughs> um, and so I uh, I think one of the big things that's been important or maybe important for the community to understand is that they do own the property. It's their property to own and decide what they want to do with their nonprofit organization. Um, but I think because it's been, um, you know, it's sort of an iconic structural landmark of the community. I mean, my parents grew up with very specific memories of early childhood experiences in Turner Hall. There's what I would, what I would call an emotional ownership of the building. And I think that that's made it an emotional experience any news that happens with it, the community kind of has um, a reaction and a response because uh, they have all this uh, emotional connection and tie to it. But the property has gone up for sale, um, essentially because uh, the funding needed to rebuild it to the state that was the goal was just, it came up short, combined with escalating building costs that were just more than could be swallowed and so uh, the society society decided because it was costing them money to keep it and they weren't taking any income in that it needed to go up for sale as the best financial decision for them so yeah and we do appreciate um, the organi organizers speaking to us uh, and to, so we can tell that story to the people who are curious about the for sale sign because obviously that's you know, a big, a big topic. Uh, I remember when I first got here, one of the first 
um, jobs that I had was covering a fundraising event and they had concerts and um, live music food and everything so that was a lot of fun and uh, so it definitely is kind of it was interesting to see a before sale sign and we do appreciate everyone speaking to us and giving us the correct information so that we can tell our readers exactly what's going on. And if I may say, um, just because I think it's going to be a question in a lot of folks' minds, um, and I don't speak for the society, but uh, I know some of the questions I've heard uttered was, well, I gave donations to that. What's going to happen with that? And that does get covered in the story that we wrote. Mm -hmm. But as their status as a nonprofit society, um, they actually have to disperse all of those funds 100% to other nonprofits. So that's where the funds are going to go we're not wielding questions on that. That's not on us. But um, if if folks have some concern about that, they may bring those questions to the society. But as I understand, all those funds are going to be redispersed to other nonprofits. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing that. Um, I know I gave that to you on a pretty short notice, and you turned it around pretty quick. So thanks for getting that done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is a feature I wrote. Uh, I did the interview a couple of weeks ago, but um, I was able to get to it finally this week uh, about the uh, Bierschwall home behind Western Edge Cellars on Austin Street. Uh, that's been there since 1872, and Heinrich Bierschwall, who is one of the first rural to, uh, school teachers here in town, and he actually was one of the founding families who moved here. Um, he he built it with his um, with his wife and uh, with uh, moved his seven kids in there at the time. And, um, you know, uh, I talked to Lindy Haley, who is the current owner of the of the property and, and her wife, uh, her husband, Mike. And uh, they told me that they've been keeping keeping it up and keeping it preserved for a long time. And, it, you know, just hearing about the family foundation and the family roots that they've in the love that they've put into this house. Uh, it, it was kind of amazing. And it, it was kind of amazing to hear how honestly the house sometimes reciprocates that care. Because uh, I, um, I, they had told me in the story that w during the winter storm, when the power went out, they, um, uh, they actually were able to use the fireplace that they found inside the wall to cook <laughs> stews and to cook uh, fish and to cook some meats. And so it kind of, the love that they had given them through the years had been reciprocated from the house. And so I think that's a really cool story. Check that out on AB14. Uh, Lauren did a really good job at uh, designing that page. So um, I'm, I'm glad we were able to tell that story for them. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the city council meeting from Monday night. Uh, they talked a little bit about um, a new cross mountain, a new cross potentially at cross mountain. And a couple of other things. Lauren, do you want to talk a little about that? Yes. So first and foremost, uh, Governor Hoover, uh, Mayor, Hoover. Mayor Hoover, sorry, um, he apologized. He made a statement, um, a formal apology to his uh, comments made from the May 27th meeting. Um, there's more information about that in my short little article. But they also talked about Cross Mountain. So they... Uh, the Parks Department and the Nimitz Rotary Club found some structural issues to the cross, and so they want to have a fundraiser to raise money to uh, build a new cross. Um, and there was also complaints about lighting, so they were going to have external lights. Um, and then they talked about the club cars at uh, LBJ Park oh, for yeah. the golf course. So they are going to be uh, a new lease for the club cars at LBJ, too. So look out for those, all the golfers. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing that. And that was actually Lauren's uh, first city council meeting. So um, I think she did a great job getting all of the facts and, get, uh, you know, kind of summarizing it into a story. Um, that was kind of a shorter meeting than what they can be. Sometimes they can be about four hours long. But even still, it's sometimes... It was hard for me when I first started as a city council reporter summarizing all of that. So good work on that. Uh, the next thing uh, we're going to talk about was uh, the Healthy Pantry House that um, Faith Geiswhite had founded uh, with some other high school kids. You, you wrote that story. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yes. So if you go to the education section in the newspaper, you will find a short little story on um, something called the Healthy Pantry House. And so I went to an open house on June 2nd, I believe. And it was the opening of a new food pantry here in town started by a recent high school graduate, Faith Geiswhite, um, as well as some other high schoolers whose names are in the story that will hopefully carry on, um, carry on this project. And essentially, healthy food, or yeah, healthy, 
Pantry House <laughs> is a healthy food pantry. And it is, it was built, it was donated by multiple um, donors, electric building companies um, that are that are mentioned in the story. But Faith ultimately had a had a vision for um, you know, because as we all know, if you take a trip to the grocery store these days, um, food, but especially fresh produce, is is pretty pricey. As you know, over as you as you rack up um, over multiple trips, and mm-hmm. so it's not necessarily sustainable, and it's not cheap for um, low income folks um, or those in need to ne- to go get um, healthy food options. And so she had this vision to create this food pantry where she has a $250 donation or sponsorship monthly by HEB um, to provide fresh produce to this little building that is on um, Holmig Lane and Friendship. Yes. The Ag Barn. Right, right on the yeah. other side of the Ag Barn um, on FISD property. And if you go there, you'll find us. It's a small little building and inside it's it's very cute. It's decorated. Um, it has a fridge separated with uh, lots of produce separated by expiration date. It's got canned food, um, peanut butter, non-perishables, and it's also got um, little cookbooks that they put together. Um, just simple but but good recipes, and so as well as like feedback cards and things like that. So it's just it's a wonderful little project put together by um, the youth of this community that will hopefully hopefully offer a sustain- sustainable food option. Um, for um, those in need. The, I will say that as people are super generous and Faith mentioned that, but due to um, health regulations, they cannot accept produce from neighbors or you know, from, your, from your garden. They can't go to farmer's markets. They have to buy from, um, from certified retailers like HEB. But if you would like to donate canned food, um, non-perishables are always very welcome as well as um, sponsorships so that they can go buy fresh produce so cool yeah that was uh really deep i remember uh, faith had called me about a week or so ago saying that she was going to open it and you know you said it was for for people in need and you know right now with costs increasing you know ever so quickly on almost everything it, it's definitely something for everybody mm-hmm. to use um in a time where yeah, costs are skyrocketing and inflation is a big deal. So I thought that was a good little community co- uh, project that these that these students worked on. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and one last thing was Car Fest was this past weekend. Uh, Ken had taken a lot of fun photos of that. So if you want to see some classic cars and some classic trucks and uh, a little kind of a live look into that, it's on page D1 and it starts some photos start on A1 of the paper. So check that out. Uh, this w- coming weekend is a uh, craft beer festival and uh, that, that starts on Friday evening. So uh, go check that out if you're a craft beer enthusiast like me. Um, and yeah, I think that's all we've got for, for today. And this is your last meeting. This is my last one. So what gives you the right? <laughs> 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 Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, for always reading our stories. If there's anything that we're not covering that you want us to cover, uh, always let us know. You can reach us out at, uh, reach us at fbgnews at fredericksburgstandard.com or uh, at 830-997-2155. Uh, I'm Samuel Sutton. This is Brooke Nevins, Brent Burgess, and Lauren Guzzi. Thank you so much.